China hacks so much every day. Uh, FBI Director Ray just went on 60 Minutes and said, you know, China stole more intellectual property than all these other uh, countries combined. It's, you know, it's part of their doctrine. You know, I was at Ariba, Alibaba stole intellectual property from us. And then a few years after that happened, I went over and I was talking with uh, some Chinese execs. I go, hey, when are you guys gonna stop stealing our intellectual property? And they just looked at me like I was crazy. It's like, well, you know, we don't really have a word for steal in a Chinese language. You know, if it's out there, you just take it. And he goes, it's, it's your guy's fault because you're not protected. And this is really where the trust principle uh, comes in, is that if, let's say, you're a Silicon Valley CEO, I'm a Chinese company. If I could steal your intellectual property, I don't have to be transparent. I can use slave labor. I can use these cheap, dirty, coal-fired power plants. I don't have to be reciprocal with my market. I am the law or I don't have to obey the law. I'm going to beat you every time. And what we did with the trust principles is we took those principles they've been using against us and we flipped them on their back and used it against them. So we actually weaponize the very principles that protect our freedoms. I wrote this article in Fortune, especially based upon Russia's invasion uh, of the Ukraine and the atrocities that they're committing, because that's increased the probability of a China-Taiwan conflict. And, you know, there were about 300 companies that had to pull out of Russia, and, and thank God that they did. But that cost hundreds of millions, billions of dollars. There were no plans on that, uh, sitting back on a, on a shelf on those. Now what I've seen out there is some of the most well-respected board of directors members are demanding from their CEOs their China contingency plan because if Xi does pull up Putin and attacks Taiwan, the impact is well over 10x because the Chinese economy is well, way, way, way bigger uh, than Russia. And it will be devastating for industry worldwide and, and literally catastrophic uh, for high tech. You know, if you think about what's a corporate uh, board member's responsibility for their shareholder is mitigating risk. You always have a plan in case you have like a cyber breach and you have a chief risk officer to take care of that. These companies need to have that China contingency plan. And that CEO, uh, you know, once he presents that and that gets blessed, it, it, he's probably best advised to begin implementing many of those steps because uh, when something does happen, uh, if you haven't begun that, it, it's going to be too late. As part of this process, we create a thing, uh, what's now called Tech Statecraft, which is the integration of Silicon Valley strategies with foreign policy tools based on the trust principle. And that's, of course, why we carried on the mission at the Kroc Institute for Tech Diplomacy uh, at Purdue. What was very clear to us is that this whole area of Tech Statecraft, of integrating Silicon Valley strategies, with foreign policy tools based on the trust principle. This is not taught at the United States State Department, Commerce Department, Defense Department, Trade, Treasury. Basically, there aren't a lot of skills in terms of economic warcraft. And in Silicon Valley, we actually practice economic warcraft because it's all about being the category king. We just happen to play by the rules because if you don't have your integrity, you're not gonna la it last very uh, long. We formed the Institute for Tech Diplomacy to train not only our federal agencies, but also our allies as well, and also the private sector as well. And, you know, these uh, strategies uh, that we deployed, for example, in building that Clean Network Alliance of Democracies, they're battle tested. The mission is to advance freedom with technology because it, 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 it has to. It could be used for good purposes or bad. And, uh, and that's really, really important. And so to be able to teach this uh, tech diplomacy uh, to key bodies, key organizations, key individuals, and including the private sector is absolutely critical. Mm -hmm.